What's going on guys? It's finally time to do the studio tour. I'm going to show you all the goods inside. Before we go in there, just want to say thank you to my girlfriend because when we were shopping for a house, I told her my only condition was I need a big room for all the music. So let's check it out. Make sure you subscribe. See on the other side. so here's the actual studio so the main point of interest here is the control board this is a 32 fader control surface it's the uh, QCon Pro G2 so I have this running at all times I can control all of my instruments buses things like that through all of these faders they're motorized they move on their own and everything this desk was actually custom built to fit this particular setup which is pretty cool took a long process couldn't have done it on my own so thanks dad one of the main things that I wanted was a keyboard underneath the desk I used to have it off to the side and that would be kind of a pain to keep turning and things so we made sure we put a drawer underneath and this is the native instruments s88 this is actually the old model they have a newer one now and there's just enough room here on the side for the headphones so I can grab them anytime I need them and they stay underneath out of the way. Starting over here we have the Native Instruments Machine Jam. So this is normally used for like hip hop beats and things like that. But since I don't really make that kind of music I actually repurposed it. And all of these buttons are used for key switches and the touch strips are used for MIDI CCs so I can have extra control that I wouldn't normally have with just the keyboard by itself. Um, I also use a trackpad on the left so I have a trackpad on the left, mouse on the right. And the reason I do that is because when you're navigating your workspace you can move up and down left right zoom while using the mouse at the same time so it's just a workflow thing it's super fast and then on the back here we have two power supplied rack mounts that's powering pretty much everything on this desk. I can shut it down with those two switches and that just takes care of everything. We have a headphone amp up here with eight outputs so if I have multiple people in here recording at the same time they can all have their own volume levels and things set and then there's just a PV EQ underneath there. This is the Mackie Big Knob. I really was looking for something to control the overall volume just right in front of me at all times so I don't have to reach over to the interface. This also you can hook up multiple sets of monitors. You can change it to mono, you can mute and you can dim and the knob itself is very sturdy. Then in the middle here is the Stream Deck. So this is mostly used for more complex uh, key commands in Logic, things that you wouldn't normally use often or remember. So when you use this, I can use things like, I can set a command that'll hide every track that's unused, for example. So if there's no region on it, I can press one button and everything just goes away and I'm left with what I'm working on. This is just a DB display. I just got this just to you know, add some light and excitement to the front end of the desk so it lights up when audio is playing through the computer. And then on top we have a 34 inch Dell ultra wide monitor. And just above that, this is the Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone. So this is used if I am streaming or doing videos. Uh, I really wanted to get a dedicated microphone up above that was just out of the way. I have better microphones than this, but I really just needed something that was 
designated gets the job done. Back behind we have two JBL 308s, I think they're called, studio monitors. And I've had those for a few years now and they're great. Over here, there is a second keyboard for the Mac. I don't really use this much, but if I'm tracking guitar or something by myself and I'm over on the other side of the room, I can carry this in the trackpad over there and I can operate everything from a distance. This here is the computer I'm using. This is a 2017 iMac with 64 gigs of RAM. And I have this running over to the ultra wide as the main screen that I use. I've got a few external uh, hard drives running samples. I have a Samsung T7 and then actually tucked back under here is a Western digital drive that I use for backup storage. So here's the side cart with all the uh, analog equipment. Starting up here is the Scarlett 18i20. This is where all my inputs and outputs go for the whole studio. Just below that, we got the Art Pro VLA 2. Below that is the 1173 preamp compressor. This thing is amazing. And then we got some more Art Pro stuff. A DBX compressor with two channels and then a functioning patch base so I can patch in and out of this stuff however I need to. And then below that, this uh, this was picked up just to fill space. It is broken also, so that's cool. And then right here we have some individual power supplies going to each of these so I don't have to leave them running at all times. I can just power them off as I need. And then we have a DI box on the bottom with four channels and a little drawer on the bottom filled with all the patch cables. So if I need to quickly throw an effect on there, I can just patch it right there without having to go anywhere. And then of course on the top, cats never leave me alone when I'm in here. So we built this little bed and they sit on top and it helps me avoid clutter. Moving along the room, we have these sound panels that we built. So they're actually solid wood on the sides and around the edges. And we filled that inside with insulation and then stretched this fabric around, stapled it on the back. And we've got six of those mounted. And then we have the base traps back in the corner, which we also built. And they make a huge difference. When you come in the room, you can feel the difference in this room when you actually walk inside. And then we've just got some uh, albums and things that I've worked on. This is the door leading out, and then right next to it, we have the closet. This room originally, right here, there was no wall right here. So it actually goes in to where the closet is, and where the desk was, there was a wall going all the way across. And it was like this huge, awkward walk-in closet. So we decided to knock down that wall, basically move it over here, plant it in this wall, give us a nice corner closet, and then this room is perfectly rectangular. We redid the entire ceiling, painted all the walls. We put some overhead lights that go over the desk. So if I want lighting just on that side or just on this side, we can control that too. And then this is the closet. So this here is my, actually my first MIDI controller. This is what I used before I got the native instruments. And this was my first actual guitar. Um, it's a Epiphone Les Paul and I stripped the finish, pulled all the parts out of it as a pandemic project and in true musician fashion I never finished that project. We've got some chimes here which I've used on Morrowind and yes no studio is complete without a didgeridoo. We've got a Rainmaker stick because why not? And then back here in the shelves, so up here is full of microphones and acoustic instruments, cables, all the random stuff. So this case we'll use if we're shooting films. I'll bring this with. And in here we've got, I keep my SM7 in here. We got the Rode M5 matched pair for recording stereo if we want to do ambiences or guitars, things like that. 
I keep two SM57s and then this strip back here is where that road shotgun mic gets placed for shooting that stuff. This here, advertisement. This is the camera case. So this is where we keep the lenses for my Sony camera that I use for videos and live streams, all that fun stuff. Here we got the field recorder that I use when we uh, do short films. So I grabbed this hideous bag because a real bag is like $400. And this was 15 and they did have it in black, but when you're filming and you have gear sitting everywhere and everything's black, I wanted to be able to spot it easily. So I got this really hideous bag and I actually just took a piece of styrofoam, covered it in tape. And then this sits in there right on top of it and I cut holes through here so the cables run in and out and it works. I've got one PA system right here, and then there's another PA system out in the garage. We have the one mixers here, and then we got this Behringer up here. And then in this box here, there's also, I have an isolation cab. So there's a speaker in there, and I can put a microphone in it and connect through the box. So you can record loud volume guitars, and it's super quiet outside. Up next, we have this bass guitar that I finally picked up. Honestly, it's a, it's a B204, whatever that is. I don't know anything about bass, but I use it when I'm tracking and it works really great. And then in the corner here, we just have some decorative stuff, uh, guitars, photos, things like that. And then this here is the Vox AC15 guitar amp that I use to record on. This thing is really nice for recording cleaner guitar tones and it doesn't get too loud and I can also take this and run it into that isolation cab so there's no sound coming out in the room. So in the back of the studio we have this little shelf. I used to have a bigger one but kind of started to feel a little crowded so I downsized. Down below we have all of my guitar pedals. Um, we've got pretty much every effect you can think of on there. I got assortment of guitar picks. We've got an Ebo back here which rests on the strings and vibrates, creates a constant sound on a guitar, sort of like a, a bow would on an instrument. Um, slide guitar, capos, all that stuff. Uh, another lamp for decoration. And then we have a cajon down here which is a, it's an acoustic drum instrument. There's kind of a bass tone and a snare tone to it. We use that a bunch on the 12 string stuff that we did. And then I've got some guitar books and this right here is probably the most prized possession in this entire room. This is a full conductor score of the Lord of the Rings Symphony, which is super rare, apparently. Um, so the guy who gave it to me, if you're watching this, you know who you are. Thank you. I'm not supposed to tell. Over here we've got the Fender Stratocaster. This is what I use most of the time for recording electric instruments. So here are more of those sound panels going across the wall and then the guitars are laid between them. I got these just cheap little decorative vines just to add some color to the room. Up here is the... 12 string guild guitar and then we also have the taylor uh, 150e i think it is 12 string acoustic and then i keep this little ottoman here and inside is just a bunch of uh, instrument cables uh, power cables and extra patch cables so that i don't have to go digging around in the closet if i need something really quick and lastly, as we make our way back to the desk, we have the camera. This is a Sony A6400, and it sits on a camera slider. So there's a remote you can use, and it actually pans back and forth on its own. You can set the speed and distance and all that stuff. Hello? 
Hello? Come on.